Nathan, it seems like, I don't know, to me only hours ago that we were sat talking in the park about the fact that Regatta was about to start, that you'd ended up going into it as favourite. And, uh, and you were saying that you were kind of um, just going to not really let that pressure affect you, but try and use it to your advantage. And looking back, here we are, seven days later, you've sold the Great Regatta, you, you've won it pretty comprehensively, to be honest. Um, how do you think you did handle the pressure in the end? I mean, you didn't look like a man under pressure, you like a man at the top of his game. No, I, I sell a fair bit under pressure in most of the events that I do. So, um, you know, I just tried to treat it like another event. And, um, you know, I guess I have did a lot of selling against all the guys that were here in the past. So, you know, I had a lot of confidence after the Nationals and all the training. And the whole goal was just to go out there and uh, keep the boat in one piece, which I did keep myself in one piece, which I did mostly. And, you know, use the boat speed that I had and the local knowledge that I had to get around in top fives. And, you know, a lot of them were, you know, mostly top fours. So. Can we just talk about the about a couple of things, really. boat speed first of all is the, is the first one. You clearly never had a shortage of pace in all the different conditions, that, that was clear. And certainly all your competitors would, that'd be the first thing they'd say was, Oof, that Nathan, he's a bit quick. Now, boat speed comes from a lot of places, clearly. But mm -hmm. one thing's clear, you've beaten a lot of people who are extremely good technical sailors, and yet you've had a jump on them. Where would you say, without trying to give away too many secrets to them, where would you say those points of advantage are for you? And why is it that we saw quite a significant difference in your boat speed day to day? Uh, I, I think there's, there's three main areas, like I'm more than happy to share that. There's three areas that I think where I got my speed from and you know if you look at the sails, Andrew McDougall makes really good KA sails and um, I was you know lucky enough that he was happy to sponsor me and gave me a couple of sails so I had a 13 and a 10 so I had you know the, the medium air sail and then the high wind sail to work with and um, I'd worked with CST Composites a lot and Clive Watts and his team and um, They've spent a lot of time developing masts for these sails and um, you know I had five masts to choose from for the event so I had a big range of you know um, masts that I could use with my sails so every time I went out I was always able to have a mast that I knew how it would work through this wind range. And, and were um, you just trying a mast and a sail going out and after half an hour going don't like that come back and change it or well, how does the development yeah, work? Yeah like I had, I had um, a mast that I had at the Europeans which Clive built for me and it was you know it was obviously really good work with the 13. And then from there he developed a few more and he just came to me uh, just after Christmas and said, look, here's four more, he, here's like the differences, go out and test them, see what you like, see what you don't like. And uh, myself, John Harris and Dave Lister and, you know, a few other guys who are in the CST team, you know, did that and we just sort of shared the information around and came up with, you know, two masts that work well with each sail. And, um, so there's a mast sail thing going on. It's a mast on, sail and thing You're happy on. with how you got. But then, so, so to be fair, did the people you talked about, they had that same advantage. So that, that probably is a parity thing, isn't it? So, so John had like the same sort of yeah. set as me there. So that's, you know, that was where I think, you know, that's that's above the water. And then below the water, there's, there's two things. There's the foils, and then there's the way that you, you set up the whole gearing and the wand mechanism. And with the foils, I um, you know, was talking to a lot of people in the past and you know, we've gone from the bigger rudder to the little rudder. And I was just thinking like, well, why do the centerboards have to be so big? So Joe Turner and I spent a lot of time talking about it and eventually Joe was brave enough and he cut two centimeters off the tips of his foil. Right. Are those I, expensive carbon foils? Yeah, and then so he went a little bit quicker. So I thought, all right, well, you know, I'll buy another foil and I cut six off each tip. <laughs> And, you know, basically, I think that's why, you know, I had a, a good advantage. Like in the last race, I decided to hike downwind and just went past everyone downwind. I like saw you Every other actually. race, I yeah. was just sitting there just trying yep. to make it through the yeah. course. And so it's not quite America's Cup style development, or maybe it is. You no, just, it's just chop, a off, hacksaw. chop off two centimetres, go, and if it's flat. And what you'd done if it had been slower, how'd you get the two centimetres back on? Well, I just had another one, so oh, I just put it back enough. on. Nice. So I had like a really good foil, which when Joe broke his foil the other day, I just said to him, look, you know, I've got my foil here, which is full size, just use it. So yeah. I gave him my spare foil and right. he had one from AMAC that was, you know, he got the other day gotcha. and he used it yesterday and it wasn't that quick. So, so we've got the stuff above the water, we've got stuff below the water. What's the third thing? And then the third thing's the whole gearing and how it all works. And okay. that's that's a lot of time, you know, you've got your right height adjuster, you've got your gearing adjuster, you've got the bow fitting. And, you know, I spent a lot of time with Tom and Joe trying to work out ways to make it better. And one of our, Tom's good mates, um, you know, as an engineer and he made all these parts for us so I could adjust the ride height and it just would work perfectly. I could adjust the gearing while going around the course. I could, you know, I had the bow fitting so there was no slop and, you know, at the end of the day, those little things just give you the confidence to push the boat hard. Like when it's windy, if you don't have the confidence to push the boat at full speed, then you're never going to go full speed. And if mm. you're just sort of going, oh, if I push it too hard, the foil might let go or, you know, the wand might not react properly. And that's the difference. Like I could go downwind 
to the bottom mark at full pace, whereas other people were just taking it cautious. And I could just pull in hundreds of metres because you know, I spent so much time developing this stuff with these guys. I was going to say, works. all the things you've talked about sounds like a pretty methodical process with a little bit of hacksaw stuff added in, mm. but uh, it takes time to do that with any oh. sense of accuracy, you'll get to a good point, because you've got to keep checking and measuring and stopping. Um, so you've spent a lot of time doing it. Um, in, would you say that that effectively becomes the kind of the magic ingredient, the hard to have thing, which is the time to go through this process, or is it actually knowing which thing to aim at and which thing to change? You, you need to have some goals of what you want to achieve and then you need to have the time to, to do it and it's not just the time to do it, it's the time to test it and you need to have people who sail against you who have like a, you know, this is the reference and then you test it and you go, okay, that's better, so everyone goes to that and you test it and you go to the next step and, you know, this winter, Joe and I were up, you know, at 6am in the middle of winter, we went out on the coldest morning in winter sailing with John and Scott and, you know, there was, the whole Aussie guys were, you know, just you know, doing their best to do as well as they could. And the end result is the, Aussie, the end result is that Aussies yeah. have clean, cleaned out the foreigners, haven't yeah, they? Well, we got be honest. The top three, top four, so you know. Pretty impressive. So that final thing, uh, Nathan, we've talked about all the technical stuff, um, and you, you, but your advantages there aren't unique to you because you've worked with other people. There's clearly also there's a sort of a what gets called an X factor. It's like a, a, a human being thing, and all the classes you've been into, you've you clearly excelled at. And I'm sure there'll be classes in the future you'll do the same. W what do you think is the thing that allows you to learn maybe that much faster? These techniques, or when you've learnt them, allows you to execute them on the race course just better enough that you seem to keep on winning world championships. But where's that come from? Are you just lucky? You were born with it, or where? What's happening? Help I, us here. I don't know. Like I, I, uh, a lot of people say to me that I'm pretty good at retaining information, and I think sailing's a lot about information and you know learning from mistakes, realizing you know what you can do slightly better, and you know whether it be lines in a movie. I can remember lines in a movie. I've just got that kind of knack where I just. I think I tend to remember things and, you know, sailing's all about just, you know, you make mistakes all the time. Every race, everyone makes a mistake. If you don't make them again, that's when you do well. You know, you've got to learn from that and, you know, I've obviously done a lot of sailing. I probably sail 250 days a year, 300 days a yeah. year. So, you know, people like myself and Tom and, you know, the guys who do the full Olympic programs like Brad, you know, we just, we sail every day and, you know, a lot of people here probably might sail once a weekend and you know I'd probably sail like six days a week and you know, that's gonna I'd, make a difference, I'd have to isn't say it? if I wasn't very good if I sailed six days a week I'd have you know some issues yes absolutely well look um, you've, you've put on a pretty much of a master class this week uh, what's the next world championship you're going to be involved in um, uh, yeah so I've got far 40 worlds in February and then I'm going to do the 505 worlds in March and then um, yeah doing various other things throughout Europe in the 49er and then we've got the 49er Worlds in, in Perth in December. So and of course you've got the Olympics I guess 2012 and the 49er in London that, that I guess is you're going to be one that, of your main focuses. That, that's the main goal like between yeah. now and then it's just about getting selected which is the regatta in Perth in 2010, qualify the country, get selected and um, you know, get over to Weymouth as much as we can. And you'll be applying that same process you've just described to us for the Moth, I guess, to the 49er even more than you've already done so. Are you the current world cha cha champion at the moment? We're currently the... second. We won second, the Worlds okay. in 2009 and we yep. were second in the Bahamas earlier this year. So you're going to click back, you're going to put the Moth in the garage now and just click back into 49er mode? Ah. Uh, like you're yeah. having fun that I'm not probably, sure you'd want to put I, it away, I probably you? should put it away. <laughs> and my coach was out watching today. Yeah. And I bet you he's thinking, like, I hope he sells that yeah. boat and doesn't have anything to do with it for a bit longer. But, yes, um, but you won't. It's, it's the type of boat that, you know, it's like windsurfing or kite surfing. It's yeah. just so much fun to do it by yourself. And, you know, when we've got, like, a good group, like, I sail with Joe a lot and Tom and Goobs, who I sail with on the 49er. And, you know, there's sometimes you just don't want to sail, like, what you do for a job. And you sail a moth and it's just so much fun. It's so. a fun thing. Well, so we'll hopefully see you at the next world. I think that's Lake Garda, yeah, 2012. Yeah, it's, it's, it's only a week after the Olympics. So oh, you'll be fine. If they push it back one week, I'll definitely be there. But uh, one week might You might be celebrating a gold medal. Let's hope so. Well, uh, congratulations this way, mate. It's been a pleasure watching you. Um, and uh, we'll see you in London, if not before. Yep, cheers. Thanks, thanks a lot. No worries. Cheers, thanks.